Insightful Podcasts by Informative Hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Your hosts, Joseph and Michelle Whalen, a husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics, are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. Welcome to Insights into Entertainment. This is episode 114, Wrath of the Mouse. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my informed and insightful co-host, Michelle Whalen. Hi, everyone. How you doing today, sweetheart? I am doing fabulous. And you? Uh, If I was doing any better, they'd have to arrest me. (laughs) Okay, sure. Long week this week. It's every week's a long week. (laughs) Yeah, these days. But hey, you get to look forward to going back into the office soon, don't you? Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Look forward. You're uh, you're so excited about it. it. Yay. Well, that's okay. All week, you know, since Wednesday, we've been, or what is today? Thursday. <laughs> Today's Thursday. So I the think. last two days, I've been playing musical uh, cars at work because they're right. resurfacing the parking lot. And Tuesday, I had a uh, three hour, you know, what, five hour round trip. Right. Because you had, had to. to travel down to Maryland. So yeah. Makes yeah. for a very long week. Oh, yeah. I, I've already, like, checked in to see if, like, there's a docking station because somebody at work borrowed mine. Oh. And uh, he's like, oh, yeah, I, I talked to IT about getting you one. I haven't gotten it yet, though, huh? I don't know. I guess I'll find out next okay. month. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, good luck with so, that. So, yeah. So, July will be interesting. But that's so, not what we're talking about. That is not what we're talking about. In today's <laughs> episode in our Disney Detective We continue to return to normal, but what does normal look like after COVID for Disney? We'll talk about that. Mm -hmm. Then in our Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy, Star Wars Garage Edition, and somehow Gina Carano is still in the Star Wars news. Um, I'm I'm getting tired of talking about it. I'll tell you (laughs) that right now. I'm sorry. (laughs) Then in our entertainment news... Ricky Schroeder doesn't like the Foo Fighters concert requirements. Aw, boo-hoo-hoo. Plus... Diana Ross thanks us with a new album, her first new album after 25 years. Then we'll finish up, but not really finish up, with our insightful picks of the week. But we have a few quick afterthoughts that mm-hmm. are another sign of a return to normal. Yay. Are we ready to get started? Sure. Okay. Well, before we do, I got to do some podcast business. Before we do, Take I want to... Take your business. <laughs> I'm not that kind of business. Not that kind of... Oh, okay. Before we get started, I do want to uh, invite folks to subscribe to the podcast. You can get audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights and Entertainment. You can get video versions of this and all the network's podcasts listed as Insights into Things. We are available on Google, Apple, uh, Spotify, Stitcher, Amazon, Pandora, pretty much any place you can get a podcast these days. Mm-hmm. We are literally everywhere. Mm-hmm. I would also invite folks to reach out to us, give us your feedback, tell us what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can find us on Twitter at insights underscore things. We are on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. We are on Instagram at instagram.com slash insights into things. Or you can get links to all those and more on our website at www.insightsandthings.com. And here we go. Go for Disney Detective. So our first article comes from wdwmagic.com, and it talks about how um, the masks and social distancing have basically been dropped for the most part at Walt Disney World. Um, So Walt Disney World theme park is, you know, starting to feel kind of more and more normal each day as a new mask guideline means that guests no longer need to wear face coverings anywhere inside the actual theme parks. 
So as the parks reopen from the COVID-19 shutdown, Disney has been slow and cautious, choosing to use a phrased approach, a phased approach to reopening. And its latest milestone is no different. They so, <laughs> so what has actually changed? So it seems that, um, you know, there's uh, so the, the crowds are obviously back. The end of mask requirements gives guests who were holding back a reason to go to the park an opportunity to finally visit. Um, Most guests are choosing not to wear a mask, whether indoors or outdoors. Masks, however, are still present on some guests and all cast members are actually still wearing them, too. Uh, Shields are now optional for cast members and there's a lot less of them uh, being seen on you so know. there's a chance that Captain America might be out of uniform. <laughs> right. <laughs> He's at a different park, though. Oh. Uh, they also had mentioned in the article that nearly all of the physical distancing markers that had been placed on the ground have been removed. Uh, there are still signs that are in place advising guests to maintain spacing, but there is nothing in place to enforce any kind of distancing. Uh, in fact, the person that wrote the article said that People were very much shoulder to shoulder in in certain cases, um, kind of like how it used to be back in the day. Um, On Disney buses, they used to have plexiglass dividers in various sections. Um, That's pretty much been removed, but masks are required when you are on uh, any of the buses. Uh, And they and this is also to help them uh, with capacity issues. So they can put more people on if everybody's wearing a mask. Um, There's also a plexiglass divider for the driver. Um, And also on the monorail as well, they have now removed a lot of the plexiglass, but the cast members are actually loading you by specific rows. So they're trying to not cram as many people in. That's very un-Disney-like. Yeah. um, And so they're still kind of... You know, not full capacity, but uh, definitely putting smaller groups together uh, to try and get at least 16 people per cabin. And again, masks are still required for the boats, for the different watercrafts. um, Masks masks aren't required, uh, but they did notice that like on the Jungle Cruise, um, now they are basically loading how they were pre-COVID basically filling in every available seat, including the center ben- bench, because for the longest time they were using that as a divider. Um, but they still have the barrier up between the guests and the cast member skipper. So they're basically keeping all of the cast still safe, <laughs> but all of the Sacrifice guests. Sacrifice <laughs> the guests. <laughs> right, basically. Um, other attractions still have their plexiglass dividers in their queue, um, such as Peter Pan's Flight, It's a Small World, and the Haunted Mansion. And some pre-shows are starting to return, uh, such as Minnie and Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railra- Railway. Um, but the Haunted Mansion, the guests are still bypassing uh, the stretching room scene. Uh, so, you know, slowly but surely, I guess, you know, certain things. Uh, the other thing they talk about is mobile ordering is still being done for quick serve at 100%. Um, but all of the uh, restaurants are open to 100% capacity uh, for the quick serve restaurants. The table service uh, dining where most of those where, you know, not every restaurant is open yet. Um, those seem to be operating kind of as normal. There's still a modified menu in place um, and availability is limited you know, is still limited. So obviously they're still pushing everybody towards the quick serve with the mobile ordering for now. Obviously as attendance rises, they're going to need more food, I'm sure. Um, So, you know, more changes are are coming. So, you know. See, I'm puzzled why they took some of these away, like the the plexiglass on the monorail. So the plexiglass Mm -hmm. on the monorail was, was separating one side of the, car from the other it wasn't separating people individually in the seats right so you've already spent the money on it you've already put it up right why take it down 
Right. And I guess that's the the thing, too, why, why in some other cases they've just left it up. I don't know. Did it some something with the airflow, maybe with the air conditioning on it? You know, well, I, guess, I don't know. Yeah, I guess since you're sharing, you know, an airflow uh, motor there, it doesn't really matter if you have it up or not, you're still exchanging the same air. Right, right. Uh. So I guess, you know, maybe there were certain, or the fact of, uh, you know, is it harder to clean after so many trips? Do you even bother cleaning it? Is it easier to clean it when it's on a ride versus some of the other areas? I I don't know. Yeah, I'd be curious to know what some of the logistics were in motivating them to take some of these down because you're right, you know, you're still protecting your staff. Mm Mm-hmm. Right, exactly. So if there's a reason to protect the staff, then there's a reason there to protect There has to be a rest right. the, the rest of the people. Right. So it it I don't know, seems a little uh, a little odd. Yeah, and it just seems like okay, so bring your your park back up to capacity, but why still why not have those safety precautions still in place? Right. Well, and that's the thing. It's, you know, we got to get capacity. We got to get people in the Right. In the rides. We've got right. to get people through the gate. We need to get our money back. And it's, you know, it's it's the mad scramble for dollars. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they're doing it. You know, you look at the picture we have up on the screen here now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, that terrifies me. Oh, absolutely. To be in a group of people like that. Now, we're all vaccinated at mm-hmm. this point. Yeah. I'd still be terrified to be mm-hmm. in a group of people packed that close together. Yeah. And knowing how tightly that, that Disney's packed together for everything else. Right. You know, in lines, on buses, mm-hmm. on the monorail. Absolutely. You know, during a fireworks show mm-hmm. or a concert. I mean, they pack you in shoulder to shoulder. Yep. And they do that because Disney has no compunction whatsoever about overcrowding the place. Nope. Which, you know, I just, I think that's reckless, that's greedy, and it does your customers a disservice. But I'm just interested. Then again, I'm not a fan of Disney either. So. Right. I'm, I'm interested to see... You know, because I could probably guarantee not everybody in that picture is vaccinated. Absolutely. So. Because Republicans go to Disney, too. <laughs> right. But, well, no, I see one person wearing a mask uh, in, in the corner over there. Um, but I'm interested to see. Is that who Walt's pointing to? Maybe. Is? Oh, look, there's somebody where. Is there going to be a spike? Of any yeah, sort? Yeah. You know, because we really haven't. Well, and they were talk- They were just recently talking uh, up. They did a survey of residents of California, not specifically Disney mm-hmm. uh, park goers, but the majority of people that they surveyed in California think that California opened too quickly, mm. and scientists think that there's going to be a spike, especially with this this Delta variant that's going around right. now. That's and more more virulent than anything else. It's more severe when right. you get it. Right. Fortunately, the vaccines are effective against it, but there's you know. Over thirty-five uh, percent of the population refuses to get a vaccine at this right, point in time. Right. They're all susceptible to this, mm-hmm. and going back in without having more people vaccinated, right, is just overexposing that population. Yeah, I, I just, I don't know. It, uh, well, needless I hope. to say, we're not going to Disney on vacation anytime <sighs> yeah. soon. Yeah, we had thought about it, and then we we didn't. So and we didn't. Right, <laughs> and we didn't. Thank you, Disney, for convincing us otherwise. Yeah. You're not getting our money this year. Nope, not yet. Speaking of uh, Disney doing things, uh, getting back to normal, what's our next story? Yeah, so this was some, you know, kind of happy news, I guess, for a lot of people. It seems that fireworks are going to be coming back this summer. So as we continue to see, com- uh, you know, communities adjust and ease COVID-19 guidelines, there's a new sense of optimism, obviously, with many positive signs moving forward. So Disney, they are starting to finally bring back, you know, some beloved experiences. So a Disney tradition since 1957, fireworks shows are what Disney Walt Disney always called the perfect goodnight kiss at the close of a magical day. Yes, flaming explosions in your <laughs> face are a great goodnight kiss. I always liked them. So beginning in July, just in time for the nation's uh, Independence Day celebrations, the fireworks will be returning. So Walt Disney World uh, will have their fireworks returning on July 1st. 
uh, at the Magic Kingdom, the Happily Ever After show, uh, which is presented by Pandora Jewelry, will transform Cinderella's castle with lights, projections, and pyrotechnics. Um, and then, obviously, over at Epcot, you have the new Epcot Forever show, which will be going on. Uh, and then in California, uh, starting July 4th, Mickey's Magic Mix will be their state-of-the-art um, show that will be going on over there. So uh, the information actually came from the uh, Disney blog, uh, Disney Parks blog. Uh, so they also mentioned that to be on the lookout that there might be some virtual viewings of uh, Happily Ever After uh, coming for those that can't be at the parks when the, the fireworks start. So. Great. So we're getting back to normal. So let's blow stuff up. <laughs> it's a great American way. Well, and that's the other thing, too, is, you know, I, I don't know how much of their fireworks were like surplus or whatnot, because I had heard various different news outlets were talking about um, that the fireworks, because of the shipping issues and things like that, and fireworks coming from China uh, and overseas that a lot of towns, you know, local towns that would do firework shows weren't going to be able to do them because right. there weren't fireworks that were going to be available. So I wonder, you know, with the, the shows going on in Disney, Disney World and Disneyland, how much... Well, I can almost guarantee you that they make all theirs domestically... Um, you know, they've got their entire. I'm sure they probably team. have their now, own. Sourcing the raw materials might be a different story, right? Like I wonder, the raw materials are going to be more expensive if you source them domestically, right? And I wonder if you'll be able to tell the difference if, like, the show's a little shorter, right? Right. Or You're, you might have a something a little less, less stuff, less less material used, right? Right. Um, but you got to also remember. A good portion of the firework shows that they do are laser light shows True. Now too. So right. it's, they so, really cut down on the amount of fireworks. Well, and that's the thing off. is, are they going to be doing more laser light stuff to kind of compensate mice for with freaking laser beams? Mice with laser beams. So it'll be interesting. You know, so that's kind of good news for people that you know, as we've been talking about, you know, all of these experiences that. Yep. All the stuff they took away. That they took away to that they're starting to finally, you know, bring back. And so, I'll guarantee you when they start to bring them back, they're going to raise their prices again. Of course. Because, you know, you're paying full price for 30, 70% of the shows that you were getting before. So now right. if we go to 100%, we can charge 15% more per ticket now. Right. That's what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. So that was all we had for our Disney detective. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back with our tales from the edge of the galaxy. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Sith Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. for Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy. Pew, 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 pew. Pew, pew. Okay. So this was a really cool uh, article that I found uh, that was on avclub.com, and it was Parents Risk the Wrath of the Mouse by Creating a Very Cool Ride. Um, so it seems that when they had asked their child what they wanted 
for their birthday party, they had decided that they wanted, the child had wanted a Disneyland at home party for their birthday. Um, so it seems that the parents who remained anonymous in this video, um, and it was basically just uploaded uh, with the title Disneyland at home for Indy's birthday. It seems that they modeled the original 1987 version of Star Tours in their garage, and it featured a big handmade space shuttle surrounded by um, distinctive Star Wars crates, a droid, and a guy that might possibly have been the dad uh, who was dressed as Han Solo. Um, they basically take you on this little trip. It moves around. You get jostled. Um, and then when you emerge, kids get to meet Princess Leia. And then before they leave the ride, Darth Vader comes to try and take them. And uh, Han Solo basically fights and, you know, he he hits something. So the garage door opens so the kids can escape. Um, so the description basically said requested a Disneyland themed party at our house for her birthday, which was in April uh, back in 2019. It seems that the couple had actually built some other attractions, but the party was canceled because of the pandemic and rescheduled to be held a year later. Um, so no idea what other rides these parents had, you know, in their house. Um, you know, the article talked about maybe they had like a bobsled in their backyard. Um, but it was really very cute the way that they did it. And, you know, to see all the smiles on the kids faces um, and even some of the parents that that took the ride, uh, it was it was pretty cool. So, yeah, we watched through uh, before we started the podcast. Mm -hmm. And I got to tell you, this was really probably the coolest thing I think I have ever seen somebody do at their house now i had a friend of mine years ago mm -hmm. who used to build out in his two-car garage a full fun house walls and uh uh scare things right. and drop floors mm -hmm. and a, a elevator at one point and i thought that was cool but this totally <laughs> takes the case because you would totally you know. oh man this was just so cool to have Vader come in at the end. Right, right. It, it was it was just incredible. And, like, can you imagine being the parents on the block that have this? Oh, my God. Yeah. You, you Absolutely. Would, you would never get any peace and quiet. Oh, and I'm sure, like, once the birthday party was over, you know, people would still want to come over. And it was cute because if you're not familiar with the ride, and this is based off of the original version of the ride, um, there's a, the, the pilot is Rex and he's this little right, robot. Right. They even have a little puppet of him, you know, yeah. when you get on the ride. So, you know, they, they put a lot of effort into and this. And it's so well done. The fact yeah. that they can fit three people on there mm -hmm. and have one person do all the motion, motion simulations for it. Right, right. They built the whole thing. You've got the soundtrack going on. You've got a TV inside this ship that he made. Right, right. It was just the, the level of detail. Mm -hmm. Like if Disney doesn't see this and hire this guy, they're totally missing out. Yeah, and we have no idea where these people are located. I'm guessing they're probably in california yeah but yeah they're very cool which which stinks because you know we're not and i i, I, I want to be friends with them <laughs> i don't want to ride it i just want to go and see right because he, he did the whole garage mm -hmm. yeah you know you with had a, lights a and everything at one point you've yeah. got the lights on the walls you mm -hmm. got vader showing up yeah you've got the mom and dad in costume was as ann and leia it's just, it was it was cool. It yeah. was cool. Yeah. And you know, they do mention in their in their uh, I guess interview or their post that they they don't make any money off of this right. at all. Right. You this know, was this is purely all for done the fun of the kids. Just for the fun of the kids. And exactly. and to see the look on the kids' faces when mm -hmm. they get out of that, oh, it's just it's I can't imagine how much he spent, but just the look on a kid's yeah, face. Yeah, the, the one kid said, you know, how long have you been waiting to get on it? And they were like, an hour. <laughs> yeah. So it's just like Disney. <laughs> so it's just like just Disney. Like Disney. So you get... probably you probably could be outside and get some cake right. and, you know, a hot dog or something before you got on the ride. The so. only thing that people that I would recommend is fast passes. Right. Or a gift passes. shop. 
Or gift shop, right. <laughs> Maybe right. that was their goodie bag when, when you left for the day. So. Right, so that was our good Star Wars story. <laughs> now, for some reason... She just won't go away. For like the fifth week in a row, we need to talk about Gina Carano. Yeah, well, you know. So, and this was actually, there There were two different articles that had popped up uh, for her. Basically the, the same thing. Um, so it seems that, you know... Gina's Star Wars career, obviously, we know, came to a sudden end earlier this year when she was fired. (laughs) And obviously, any, you know, spinoffs were were lost because of it. But her loyal fans haven't given up hope that Disney could reverse their decision. However, and some rumors have claimed that the actress may have had some chats with the studio about burying the hatchet. Obviously, we still don't know, but now she had made a post on Twitter that fans are are thinking, oh, this is it. She's coming back. So the former MMA star shared an intriguing image that has a clear Star Wars vibe to it. The photo depicts a shrouded figure, possibly herself, standing in a, on a very Tatooine-like landscape watching... Um, Watching non, not a, bi- oh, not a binary, but a trinary sunset. I was like, what? <laughs> uh, further adding to the intrigue, the actress had shared the photo without any comment. So, of course, everybody saw the photo and was like, yes, she's on Tatooine. Those are three sons. Yes, she's back. People can't count. You know. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. So, obviously, the fact that, you know, Carano had actually recently made a surprise comeback on Disney Plus as her episode of Running Wild with Bear Grylls season six ended up airing despite the studio initially trying to bury it. So the minor decision reversal is a long way from her actually being invited back to Star Wars uh, or back to The Mandalorian. So Disney obviously had some very strong words about the post that she had made, um, you know, and she's obviously come back to accusing the studio of bullying her and other actors. So is it a tease? Was it just her trying to get some sort of publicity because nobody, well, and you we, know. Had, we had talked about the fact that she was in talks with engaging in another sci-fi project. Right. So Which who it knows quite, that quite likely is a shot from that project that Could she's be. working on. Right. Yeah. Or just, hey, that's a really cool picture. I'm going to post it and have nothing, you know. Right. Because she could be making the whole thing up. Too. Right. And what was funny was the other article uh, that had posted the story was very much more pro her and it was all of these people that are, were posting on Twitter was like, yeah, she's back. It's confirmed. Da, 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 da. You know, yeah. this better not be a rumor. Not so Darn you, Who Disney. Confirmed it? I don't know. There was no confirmation. <laughs> exactly. These are, you know. Well, yeah, we know who they it's, are. And it's Twitter. <laughs> we, we know who they are. And they, they, facts really aren't anything that ever stood right. in their way. So I promise... No, no story next week. Next her. week, we I absolutely refuse <laughs> to introduce a Gina Carano story next okay. week. Although I will say I'm a little <laughs> disappointed in you this week. Why? You did not have any stories sourced from Giant Freaking Robot. You seem to get one in every week just because you like the name of the site. I do like their site. <laughs> You'd almost think JJ is giving us a kickback on it. I wish he would. I I wish he would too. You know we do. We do take <laughs> donations. <laughs> Come on, JJ, just throw us a bow. Just in case. You just know, we'll give case. you a plug. So that was all we had for our Tales from the Edge of the Galaxy this yep. week. We'll be back in a moment with our entertainment news of the week. I couldn't remember what was up next because we have so much going on today. Right. Entertainment news of the week coming up next. Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Talking to real teens about real teen problems. Explore issues from braces to puberty, social anxiety to financial responsibility. Each week, we talk about the topics concerning today's youth. 
We look at how the issues affect teens, how to cope with these issues, and how parents, friends, and loved ones can help teens handle these challenges. Check out our video episodes on youtube.com backslash insights into things. Catch our audio versions on podcast.insightsintoteens.com or on the web at insightsintothings.com. Go for your entertainment news. I will. <laughs> <laughs> Just because I can. So tell us why the Foo Footers are poo-poo heads, according to Ricky Schroeder. Oh, I don't think they're poo-poo heads at all. According to Ricky Schroeder. Well, you know, so, um, so the Foo Fighters held a show for vaccinated fans only and anti-vaxxers, including former child star Ricky Schroeder, were protesting outside. So anti-vax, anti-vaccine protesters were demonstrating on Tuesday outside a Foo Fighters concert in California that allowed only vaccinated fans, which was reported by, uh, by Variety. So on Saturday, the rock band had announced that they were going to be doing an intimate show at the Canyon Club ahead of a larger performance with similar requirements, which will be at Madison Square Garden in New York City on June 20th. So attendees had to show proof that they were over 21 and vaccinated in order to pick up their non-refundable tickets at the club on Sunday. Um, Variety had reported that protesters appeared to be joined by Ricky Schroeder, the former child star. So they won't even say that he's like actor, you know, Does Ricky he, Schroeder. Has he done anything lately? It's been a while. He d- did stuff not that long ago. Name something. He was on that one cop show um that's i can't yeah, well i didn't watch it so neither did i well he it's been you know at least i don't know 10 years maybe so so you're saying ricky's got a lot of free time on his <laughs> right exactly so you know and then of course he maybe he, maybe he and kevin Surbo can get together <laughs> they probably are like besties i'm <laughs> sure and the the my pillow guy too right and they sit around uh, listening to uh who's the who's the the redneck rock guy oh um yeah. Ted Nugent. Ted Nugent. Yeah, he yeah. sit around listening to Ted Nugent right. albums. So uh, he had posted on his Facebook, uh, Dave Grohl is an ignorant <laughs> punk who needs slapped for supporting discrimination, um, referring to the front man of the Foo Fighters. Ignorance comes in all shapes and sizes. Kurt Cobain is laughing at you along with millions of patriots. Fool. He does know Kurt Cobain's dead, right? <laughs> I know. <laughs> Well, I think that was, you know, maybe he meant like Kurt Cobain was rolling, you yeah, know. Well, in he his can't laugh because he's, he's, he's dead. He's dead. Right. He's dead. <laughs> maybe an analogy like he's rolling over in his grave or something would work. Right. As opposed to he's laughing at you. So obviously Schroeder and the Foo Fighters record label haven't made any comments about the requests. Um, I had heard about the Madison Square Garden concert beforehand and they were getting a little bit of flack. Uh, from from fans saying, that's it, I'm done, I'm never listening to you again, I'm throwing out all your records because, you okay. know, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Okay. And You bought them already, so you can throw them out. They're not making any money right. off they, of you. They, they're not making any money off of you. And basically, they had said that the reason why was to do with state mandates in the state of New York. So, you know, it wasn't necessarily their rule it was kind of everybody else's rule and then because they were doing such a small intimate um uh venue they were looking out again for the safety of their fans right. so so yeah, god forbid these people look out for this unlike disney who doesn't right you had the foo fighters who, mm-hmm. who do right and you know i i saw this article and the first thing that comes to mind are the darwin awards mm-hmm. and i'm thinking my god do you have any idea how many candidates there are for Darwin Awards, you know, in the last year and a half? Now? Oh, yeah. Ricky Schroeder now is chief among them mm-hmm. at this point in time, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Yeah. So, okay, well, the Foo Fighters are now the Poo Fighters, according to Ricky Schroeder. But you know what? It's going to make me want to listen to them even more now. Absolutely. So. 
Absolutely. And I'm not going back and watching Silver Spoons either. I refuse to now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Good. So <laughs> the last article we have in our entertainment news is a tribute from Diana Ross. Yeah. So this came from uh, etonline.com. Uh, it seems that on Thursday, the former Supreme announced that her upcoming album, Thank You, is set to debut this fall. In a press release, Ross promised a powerful, inclusive musical message of love and togetherness that wholeheartedly acknowledges that we are all uh, in this together. A collection of songs is my gift to you with appreciation and love, the singer said. I am eternally grateful that I have that I had the opportunity to record this glorious music at this time. I dedicate this songbook of love to all of you, the listeners. As you hear my vo voice, your heart, uh, you'll hear my heart. The album, which will be her first album in nearly 22 years, was entire w of entirely original music um, and is her first album of any kind since 2006. Uh, the singer shared that she recorded the album during quarantine in her home studio with help from award-winning songwriters and producers uh, such as Tyla Prax, uh, Jack uh, Antonoff, Troy Miller, Triangle Park, Spike Stent, and Nathaniel Ledge uh, Ledgewick. Uh, the title track in the first single dropped actually today along with the album's announcement. Uh, thank you. The album will be available to stream in September. And I think this is this is another one of those feel good things. Mm -hmm. Like she's not doing this. I'm sure she's going to make money off it, but she's not doing it for the fact that she needs the money. She's right. She's doing this as a feel good, a thank mm -hmm. you, a give back to the fans. Mm -hmm. a, you know, this is a time when we need to have a little bit of that healing spirit. Mm -hmm. You know, and who doesn't love you know Diana Ross? Oh, wife. absolutely. Incredible. Mm -hmm. Incredible. So that was all we had for our entertainment news this week. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be right back with our insightful picks of the week. Go for your insightful pick. So my insightful pick this week is actually a repeat because I had done this one back on show 30 something <laughs> a long time ago. Galaxy far far away um so my insightful pick this week is lucifer uh which is on netflix there are five seasons available the second half of season five just dropped um i guess it was the end of may um and what was interesting was that season five was actually supposed to be their last season but last uh june i believe it was they had announced that they would be coming back for a sixth and final season. So just when you think they were done, nope, they got one more season to go. Uh, so the premise behind the show is bored with being the Lord of hell. The devil relocates to Los Angeles where he opens a nightclub and forms a connection with a homicide detective. Uh, Lucifer is an American urban fantasy superhero television series uh, that had originally appeared on Fox in 2016. It uh, was on Fox for three seasons, I believe. Um, and then they canceled it, but fans were, you know, sung, so gung ho with it, and Netflix actually picked it up for the other three seasons. Um, and what was nice was that when they brought it to Netflix, they were able to be, be a little bit more edgy with the show. And I think that's when a lot of other fans kind of jumped on the bandwagon for the show because uh, it was available, you know, on Netflix and you could go back and, and watch all of them. So it was always a favorite show of mine, um, you know, from the beginning. Uh, so, I had remembered that this was supposed to be their last season. Uh, so I was kind of sad with that. But then hearing the news that they were, no, we're going to come back and do one more. Uh, so that's kind of cool. So um, so the final season will actually just be uh, 10 episodes sometime. I'm guessing, you know, next year at this point, uh, you know, 
because again things are slowly starting to to ramp back up you know with filming and and whatnot so cool good pick thanks again thank you So my pick this week, we're, we're on a trend here, is once again not a documentary. My pick is uh, after one episode of it, uh, it's the first one, the first Marvel Cinematic Universe TV show that I'm picking after the first episode, and that's Loki. Yeah, um, that's very unlike you. It is, I know. We, we still have the second one to watch. Uh, we'll probably catch that tomorrow, but... Because <sighs> we don't watch it on Wednesday. Yes. I, well, they shouldn't be dropping them on Fridays like they did all the other ones. <laughs> so set in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, uh, the Loki streaming series shares continuity with the films of the franchise and takes place after the events of the film Avengers Endgame, in which an alternate version of Loki created a new timeline. Tom Hiddleston reprises his role as Loki from the film series. Loki premiered on June 9th and will consist of six episodes. Uh, it is part of Phase 4 of the Marvel Cinematic Universe and was confirmed for a second season already being in development. After stealing the Tesseract during the events of Avengers Endgame, an alternate version of Loki is brought to the mysterious Time Variance Authority, the TVA, not the Tennessee Valley Authority from uh, the Depression times, the Time Variance Authority. The TVA is a bureaucratic organization that exists outside of time and space and monitors the timeline. They give Loki a choice, face being erased from existence due to being a, quote, time variant, or help fix the timeline and stop a greater threat. Loki ends up trapped in his own crime thriller, traveling through time and altering human history. So far, we've only watched the, the first episode, like I said, uh, but it is the first series on Disney Plus from the MCU that I like after the first episode. Uh, you know, it took me four episodes of WandaVision before the show had any appeal, and two before I, I really started to warm up the Falcon and Winter Soldier. Um, from my own perspective, that's a promising start for this show. Uh, I'm very excited to see. I'm, I'm saying it's only six episodes, but I'm excited to see the rest of them for the season. I'm sure that some of that appeal has to be credited to Hiddleston's portrayal. I've always loved the character in his hands. And much to my surprise, part of the appeal is actually Owen Wilson's performance as well. I've never been a big fan of Wilson's. He seems one step above Nicolas Cage <laughs> when it comes to a one-dimensional portrayal. I often struggle to see Wilson as anything more than a clueless pot-smoking surfer guy <laughs> injected into situations for comedic relief. Uh, but in Loki, he's demonstrating a depth of character that utterly shocks me. He comes across as a grizzled veteran detective one might find in a classic noir Mickey Spillane novel, but with a worldly knowledge that makes the offhand observations he makes seem prophetic. Uh, the show's appeal... Um, might be a, a the retro tech look that gives it a Fallout Vegas feel that I can wrap myself in like a comfortable blanket. But in reality, I'm sure it's a combination of all these things and the classic MCU uh, comedy, drama, action vibe we all have come to, to love. It's really, it's it's almost like the perfect blend of everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and all the pieces of it seem to be gelling together after one episode, which blows my mind. Right, right. Um, you know, they go back and they borrow, in the first episode, they borrow footage from Avengers Endgame mm -hmm. to show the scene where he picks up the Tesseract, but they're thoughtful enough to actually reshoot some of that so you can see it from his perspective, mm -hmm. too. Yeah. So it gives you a whole new twist on how things happen. Mm -hmm. There's one scene where they kind of do a... You know, this is your life segment. And mm -hmm. they walk him through different parts of his life. Right. Trying to prove the point of him being this cruel, sadistic, mean person who does things with no good reason. And once it's flaunted in his face, you actually start to, to feel sympathetic with the character, which you're not supposed to feel sympathetic. Right. With Loki. Mm -hmm. um, but Hiddleston pulls it off great. Mm -hmm. So. My pick this week is Loki on Disney Plus. Episode two just dropped. 
free. It'll be out on Wednesday of next week. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back with some afterthoughts. So we have some return to normal. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So let's talk about that. So first off, we had gone over the summer, we had gone to the mini monster mania mall shopping experience, whatever it was. Uh, so the monster mania convention that was supposed to be held in May had actually gotten pushed to August, um, which is the one that they do in Cherry Hill. Then their September uh, convention they do in Hunt Valley, Maryland, which is a little bit north of the Baltimore area, and just announced today they're going to be doing an October convention at the Greater Philadelphia Expo Center in Oaks, where they had done their little shopping mall uh, convention. Uh, so this was just posted on their, their website today. Uh, they basically said, hey, everybody said you should really do something at the convention center. And they were like, you know what? We're going to make this happen. So it's a nice kind of halfway point for fans that go to the Maryland show and fans that go to the Cherry Hill show. It's going to be a totally different venue for them because those other two venues are basically done at a hotel uh, where they kind of take over the hotel lobby and some of the uh, conference rooms and, and convention areas. So here it's going to be, I, I, I think it's probably going to be a, a fantastic venue for them because they'll be able to, to fit a lot more people where people won't be on top of each other. There'll be, you know, more spacing out. And, you know, we've gone to Oaks for various different things, the parking, you know, there's it's a, just a always, fantastic venue. It's such, yeah, it's such a user centric or, a, mm -hmm. you know, a, a shopper or fan centric mm -hmm. venue. Right. It's easy to get to, you know, there's places to eat afterwards. Uh, you know, it's not for us, you know, being in South Jersey, it's not that bad of a drive for us, for anybody that's in Philly or, you know, other areas, it's pretty and, easy to get like to so getting in and getting out because they've got four main halls mm -hmm. in there that can be combined and reconfigured right and getting in and out of there is so easy they're so set up they've got multiple entrances on major mm -hmm. arteries yeah it, it's just it's and everything that we've ever gone to there has been run so smoothly mm -hmm. yeah we've never gone to anything there that we had an issue with it's and really even, one of my favorite expo centers right and even when we went to the shopping mall where we were like, how is this going to work? Yeah. Is it going to be in a parking lot? And we were like, wow, this was perfect they for had, them. They had a specific area for right. outdoor venue, right. which was done perfect right across the street from the parking lot. Yeah, too. it was it was totally, you know, the and as we had mentioned when we had talked about it, really the only negative thing we had to say is that there could have been something for more shade right. because but it was nobody knew at that time but of year nobody was knew it was going to be 95 so degrees I that cannot day. fault them for that. right exactly like if like you if had you to plan to do that like in the middle of july right and still didn't have any kind of protection right then i could fault you for it. right but and that's the thing is other than that it ran smoothly yeah. you know everything was perfect so i'm kind of looking for you know like as as we were talking even though the cherry hill location is much closer for us we don't have to pay to go over the bridge or whatever i would be more inclined to actually drive a little bit further and go to oaks because you know the the cherry hill experience parking is always a pain in the butt it's yeah. always very crowded yeah it's nice you know, it's, but it's just right. so packed in there it's just right. it's not set up and maybe in the early days when the show wasn't right, so big, it worked right. out well. And now but they've now gotten it's just so big that it doesn't big. work there. So I'm kind of excited to be able to go, and it's close to our our wedding anniversary. So you know maybe it'll be a, a cool hey wedding present. <laughs> yeah. Um, the ticket prices were basically the same as 
uh, their other conventions. Uh, twenty five dollars for Saturday. I believe it was thirty. Your pre COVID pricing. Your pre COVID pricing. Uh, guests haven't been announced yet, but as they you know do, have them. yeah, the, you know they're going to have. And there's going to be some themed reunion because they do it on almost. Yeah, there's every always one of them. some sort of themed reunion where they get you know three or four stars from from some eighties or seventies horror movie uh, all together. Um, so very cool. They even had um, blocks of hotels available for people that aren't from the area uh, who are driving a bit. Uh, so if you go to monstermania.com, all the information is there. Uh, even vendors, they're looking for vendors. So if you happen to be somebody who who's a vendor who Cherry Hill's a little bit too far for you, but Oaks isn't as bad. You know, here's a, a great opportunity. And I think that's what's also going to kind of be cool, because when we went to the shopping thing, there were different vendors that we haven't seen yeah, before. Yeah, a lot more vendors. Where when we've gone to Monster Mania back to back years, it's a lot of the same vendors, which it's well, great. Well, I think part of the problem is, is because it's so cramped, you don't see all the right, vendors. Right. You don't get to see everybody because you're just trying to get through, you know. So I think this will be a great opportunity because, again, you're going to get all these different vendors who aren't from, you know, either of the local and areas and stuff. plenty of room to, to browse. Because a lot of times right. at Cherry Hill, there's so many people there that you don't, you can't really stop and, and look through a table right. when there's so many people trying right. to get Right, because down. if there's already so many people looking at a table, right. you can't. So yeah. very happy that they're, that they're doing this. So. so we have one more, though. Yeah, so we have one more. And this one, um, when you had to go to... Uh, Maryland for work, one of your uh, co-workers down there uh, who knows you're a geek uh, had given you the flyer for it, and it is the Ocean City Comic Con, and they are coming back in 2021. And that's Ocean City, Maryland, Ocean City, Right, Ocean City, Maryland, with all the vendors, guests, cosplay, panels, video games, screenings that you've come to love, and adding some new surprises. So it is at the Roland e powell convention center in uh coastal highway ocean city maryland it's just one day that they do it it is saturday december 11th from uh 10 a.m to 5 p.m cost is really you know almost nothing it's ten dollars for adults kids nine and under are free with a paying adult if you come in costume you get a dollar off and if you bring a non-perishable food item uh, you will get another dollar off. So if you do both together, you can get $2 off or obviously the $10 donation. Uh, tickets are only sold at the door, so there's no pre-buying uh, of tickets, where just to mention for Monster Mania, you can go online and buy tickets ahead of time uh, right now. Um, so they have uh, different areas where you can get information. So if you go to Twitter, uh, dot com Ocean City Comic or their Facebook page, uh, which is o Ocean City Comic Con, um, their Instagram page, or you can uh, contact them on their website, which is Ocean City Comic Con dot com. You can get more information. This is one. What happened? Well, well obviously last, last year, last year, and the year before that, we, we had were just, actually going to Disney that year. Oh, okay. I, I. Remember, there was something yeah, we where... we had a schedule conflict because that was our Disney vacation okay. around the holidays. Okay, so this will be kind of cool because we don't have anything yeah. planned. And it's it's a great one because it's off-season. You know, right, December, exactly. You've had, you haven't had a Comic-Con or a convention for probably two or three months. Right, so you're kind of itching for something. It's also right before the holiday, so maybe there's I, an opportunity to find some holiday presents. And I have it on good presents. that if you want to go down and stay overnight, there are plenty of rooms and the rates are great that time of year i was gonna ocean say city. because you know and, and it'll be kind of interesting to see what ocean city is like and ocean city does sit. not shut it's ocean city is very similar to the jersey shores they don't okay. shut down in the off season entirely like they used to okay there's plenty of restaurants there's that are still open. some things there's that are venues open. that are open down there so okay they're really and this is one of the <clears> things that they're trying to do they're really trying to keep that year-round mm -hmm. attraction going. so that's probably why and they do it yep this time of year because so. they get great rates on the, on the yeah. menu as well yeah so Ocean so yes City we are Con. definitely looking forward to it maybe you know any of our friends or whoever that are interested you know 
we'll try and do like a meetup or something. Yeah, Who knows? That would be cool. You know, maybe so. maybe we we we'll get a booth down there and we'll do a podcast on on location. You never <laughs> there know. you go. <laughs> you never know. But that I think that was all we had today, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Um, before we go, I do want to once again remind folks to subscribe to the podcast. You can get audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Entertainment, or you can get video versions of all the podcasts listed as Insights into Things on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, etc. Um, I would also invite everyone to uh, give us some feedback. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can find us on Twitter at insights underscore things. On Facebook, we're at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. On Instagram at instagram.com backslash insights into things. You can get audio versions on the web if you don't have a podcatcher at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com. You can find the video versions of all of our podcasts from all three versions at youtube.com backslash insights into things. We do stream six days a week, both on uh, YouTube and Twitch. Uh, you can get us at uh, twitch.tv slash insights into things. And finally, if you go to our main website, and want to uh, get links to any of our things, you can go to insightsintothings.com. And we do have... Da-da-da-da! We finally have uh, profile pictures up for our hosts. Uh, you can check that out on the website as well. These are themed with what application was it? Voila! Voila! So yeah. it made us very Pixar-like. So, yes, so, you know, being the Disney people... That we are right. Well, so if you only consume the audio version of this podcast and, and want to know, know what we what we look like in a cartoon, <laughs> I really do look as bad as I look. Oh stop! On you don't look that bad. I think it's nice that we have like the roses in the background. You, well, you can't even tell. That's because you're such a fantastic photographer and you set the shots up. What can I say? <laughs> so, but that's all we have for this week. Yep. Uh, another one in the books. Have a good week, everyone. Bye. Bye.